Hello everyone and welcome to another Stargate Theory video. Today's video is kind of a weird one, as this is a quasi-theory, lore, and response-ish video. A response to whom and what, you might ask? The Stargate Guys video, Giant Aliens Are Furlings. Taylor, the Stargate guy, was kind of the Stargate YouTuber for a while. He did some of his first Stargate videos on Beard vs. Geek, but created a channel dedicated to Stargate stuff. And like I said, he was kind of the only Stargate YouTuber for a while. I mean, there's always been Gate World and Omega Ordained was around at this time, but I think for a lot of SG fans, it was nice to have a fan like them making videos talking about lore and theories for this franchise. Especially since there are plenty of channels dedicated to Star Trek, Star Wars, Mass Effect, Halo, and etc, etc. I know he was a big inspiration for me making my own videos, and in the past I've had this stance that I will not do videos that recover topics that others have covered, since I wouldn't be bringing anything new to the table. However, I recently came across some lore in the giant aliens and their connection to the mysterious furlings. Obviously, Taylor did a video about this years ago, but I have some new stuff to add and my own unique thoughts. So I wouldn't label this as a response video, but more a spiritual successor to that one. Taylor, this one's for you. To be clear on something, I know I'm making it sound like he's dead. He is not as far as I know. On March 15th, 2020, on his Patreon, it was said that he was going through some life changes and he would not be doing YouTube anymore. I think he did a video about it, but I can't find it. Either way, completely understandable, and I hope whatever he is doing, he is alive and well. Let's get started. So first, who are the Furlings, who are the giant aliens, and how are they connected? The first one is easy. Um, we have no idea. We only know four canon things about the Furlings. They were part of the Four Great Race Alliance. We know what their writing system looked like. We know what some of their tech looks like. And we know they had a colony in the Milky Way. And that's it. We don't even really know what they look like. I've been using these koala Ewok bears as stand-ins. This is how the Furlings were depicted in Stargate SG-1's 200th episode. But this was a joke by the writers about a story that never happened. It was a joke. The whole thing was a joke. They don't even look like that. It was a joke. Okay, so who are the giant aliens then? They were a race introduced in the 21st episode of Season 3 of SG-1, Crystal Skull. As a race, they exist in a different phase of visibility that humans cannot naturally see. When large amounts of neutrinos are released, humans can view them, in which they appear as mist or smoke-like giant humanoids from the waist up. Keep that in mind, it will be important later. And the one we meet is Quetzalcoatl, you know, the feathered serpent. We learn they create a system of travel between planets like the Stargates, but using crystal skulls and pyramids to do so. And that's kind of all we know about them. We know they are enemies of the Ghoul Old, but we never heard from them again after this episode. For both these races, there's some expanded lore in them in the books, RPGs, and games, and while I will get to those later, I want to cover what we know is 100% canon first. If you have seen some of my lore videos, you know the writers had this tendency to introduce a race in one episode and never talk about them again. And this is where the connection between the two comes into play. See, since Stargate tends to have a lot of these one-shot races that usually are not given a name in the show, and we have the Furlings, a race with a name but no body, well, this has led to a lot of theories that one of these unnamed races are the Furlings. In the case of the giant aliens, I don't know how prevalent this was as just a fan theory, but in the 2005 Stargate novel, City of the Gods, a connection between the two was made. Now, I will be upfront, I have not read the book in its entirety. I found an audio reading and listened to it until I got the relevant info I needed. In the book, the giant aliens are given the name the Yomiokin, which, side notes, I may have mispronounced that in my OG lore video on them, so I'm just going to keep calling them the giant aliens for simplicity's sake. And the name itself is actually a human name given to them. The name comes from Aztec mythology for the highest of 13 heavens. So it may not even be their true name. Anyway, in the book, they are heavily hinted to be the furlings or something else we will get to later. 
And the main evidence for this is that the writing in the giant alien's pyramid matches that of the furlings, which, like I said, is weirdly one of the few things we know about the furlings. So that seems like a pretty legit connection between the two, right? Well, no for three reasons. First, how Circuit Canon works because it's a little odd. See, in something like Star Wars, all the books, comics, and video games are meant to be canon. Yes, a lot of works were T-canonized or split off into the Legends continuity when Disney took over. And yes, Disney's Star Wars does have a really bad habit of decanonizing the stuff they made. But in theory, they are all part of the same canon. Minor errors here and there, but that's the idea. In Star Trek, we get levels of canon. Famously, Alpha and Beta. Alpha is anything from the shows and movies, and Beta is everything else. And if something from, say, a book contradicts something from one of the shows, then it is simply listed as non-canon, or Alpha canon overrides it. Okay, what does Stargate do? I have no idea. There's never really been any official statement or stance, at least I could find from MGM, about how the books, comics, audio dramas, and games fit into the wider universe. The only info fans have been given on this is from some of the writers. I can't say how every writer feels about it, but the best one to sum up comes from Robert C. Cooper. In an interview he did with Dial the Gate, he talked about some of the work he and Brad Wright did with the book Authors, and that it wasn't much since they were so busy running the show. They would talk with some of the authors and give comments on the stories about whether it would line up with the universe, but some authors would go off and do their own thing outside of the mythology. A good example was in the Stargate Universe comics, which introduced the idea of ancients on destiny present day, an idea Robert said was not his intent for a universe. As such, fans have come to the general consensus, based on the comments I get in my videos, that no, the expanded works are not canon. The most common idea I see is that the books, comics, RPGs, and the shows each have their own separate canons. Although none of what I said matters because of problem two, the book makes a gigantic error. What's wrong with it? Remember what I said about the main evidence that the giant aliens are the furlings was the writing in their pyramids? Well, here's the problem. If you go back and rewatch the episode Crystal Skull, there is no writing in the pyramid. In fact, Daniel makes a specific comment on this. Uh, I can't be sure there's no writings of any kind on the pedestal. And that's not even the only one. I found a part where the book claims that the Gu'uld were an extragalactic race. So even if the books were canon and had an alpha and beta system, this would mean this book or this detail isn't canon. And then of course there's problem three, and if you knew about this, you knew it was coming, Joseph Malazzi. Joseph Malazzi was an executive producer and writer for a lot of Stargate projects. And he's noted as saying that we have never seen the furlings on screen, only their technology. Though I will admit I couldn't find the quote of him saying this. However, I did find a quote of him saying that the giant aliens, along with the faith aliens from Universe, are not the furlings on his blog from 2011. So that's it then, right? The book that cites this is not considered canon by many fans and writers. The fact they appear on screen disqualifies them due to the comment that we have never seen a furling on screen. And they were directly called out as not being the furlings. So this video is going to end here, and I'm not going to keep talking about this, right? Wrong! See, despite all that, there are two pieces of kind of lore I want to look at that well, don't prove these guys are the furlings, because I think we have established that the answer is no. But there are some really strange connections to be made that I don't think you can just ignore. The first comes from Stargate Worlds, an MMORPG, which fun fact has been heavily hinted that this game was meant to be canon with the shows. This comes from indications Gateworld received from Brad Wright and Robert C. Cooper and the game developers. Senior content designer Stephen Garvin states that they were very gracious about accepting their stories. One of these stories being their idea of the furlings. Or more accurately, the furling, as their idea would have been that the furling was a single entity, one that stretches across time, being able to see the past and future. The furling would have either created or helped in the evolution of the ghoul old, which was part of a larger effort by the Alliance to create caretaker races that would have succeeded them. But the Ghoul Old would turn on the Furling, 
and later the remnants of the damaged furling race would have been enslaved by Ra, who would have returned for the game. The furling would have been corrupted and turned into the Stragis. And you'll notice that two of these enemy types share the same body structure as the giant aliens, a humanoid figure with only an upper torso. And what makes this more interesting is if you look at more of the concept art. Now, I found this on a video that GateWorld had done on the furlings, though sadly they did not provide a source. That being said, I tend to trust GateWorld when it comes to using accurate sources, and I found some concept art that I think was part of what they showed, and I think this image here is from the episode Paradise Lost, which is the only real episode about the furlings. Anyway, this concept art, specifically the lower two images here, we see what appears to be giant aliens made of mist or smoke. I don't know if these depictions are of the furling or their later corrupted versions, but it is interesting that, again, they share characteristics similar to that of the giant aliens. In this case being, well, giant, and their bodies being made up of what appears to be mist or smoke. Then we get to, in my opinion, the most interesting thing I found while researching this topic, which came from a Dial the Gate interview with James C.D. Robbins. He joined the Stargate team around season 6 or 7 as an art director, and later became a production designer. And in this interview, we get to see a lot of cool behind-the-scenes stuff. And for the purpose of this video, we get to see the diary from Paradise Lost. In case you don't remember, in that episode, O'Neill and Mayborn end up stuck on a furling colony that collapsed a long time ago. While there, O'Neill finds a diary that he uses to piece together what happened. Now, I've never gotten a clear look at the diary in the show, but thanks to this interview, we get a clearer picture. And if you look, you'll notice two sets of figures. The first are these black figures, who we can assume are the humans or humanoids whose skeletons are littered around the colony. As we saw, O'Neill marked them off when he was counting the skeletons. And second are these guys, these bluish-white figures who are noticeably larger than the humanoid ones. Now, these figures are very stylized, so it's hard to get a good sense of what they would have looked like, but I know something odd when you compare them to most of the other figures. Most of the black figures, not all but most, tend to follow a human form. You have a head, body, arms, and legs. But with the blue figures, that's not really the case. I can see where a head and arms might be, but there's not really a space for a body. And do these legs go all the way up? Again, this is stylized, so this is up to interpretation. But what I think we are looking at is a representation of a being that has no legs, but a wispy lower half. Which again, sounds like the giant aliens. And what I find so interesting about this is that if we create a timeline for all this evidence, this actually comes first in the timeline. This episode aired in 2003. Taking into account production time, that means this image would have been made two to three years before City of the Gods, which came out in 2005. Work on Worlds didn't start till around 2006. I don't know if this truly means anything, it could all be a coincidence. But this does make me wonder if there were some behind the scenes ideas that got shared around that we as fans are not privy to. Now, I'll be the first to admit that just because something looks like something else does not mean they are the same thing. In the case of the concept art in Worlds and the Stragis, this could just be a case of convergent evolution. After all, we have seen cases in Stargate of two races that are very similar, but no way they could be related. And in the case of the diary, again, due to the stylized artwork, this is greatly up to interpretation. I'm sure I'll get comments from people saying what they see is completely different from what I see. And just to further poke holes in my own idea, James said these figures were just 30 random doodles he made and threw on an image. And GateWorld did not ask James about the larger blue figures. So we may never really know what these figures are, However, the fact that they are larger, which while it might not indicate they are physically larger than humans, does imply some importance to these figures on the page. Let's do a quick recap. Are the giant aliens the furlings? No, there is too much evidence against the idea. However, they share a resemblance to a piece of furling artwork, which is one of the only canon things from the show, as well as a resemblance to the only depictions of the furlings from a game that yes, was never made, but was supposed to be canon. 
So there may be a connection between the giant aliens and the furlings, but if so, what? Well, City of the Gods does provide another explanation for them. The giant aliens may not be the furlings, but a computer program, an automated system that was left behind to watch over the Crystal Skull network. The Lanteans created the Pegasus replicators, and we have seen other examples of artificial life in Stargate. Would it be crazy to think that another member of the Four Great Race Alliance could create artificial beings as well? Though, I wouldn't think of them as true AI. Daniel's grandpa in the book grew to believe that the Quetzalcoatl we met in the show was not the original, but a very advanced interactive computer program that used his image. It's probably best to think of them closer to Mass Effect VIs or dumb AIs from Halo. Them being some kind of computer program would explain their quote-unquote biology, as opposed to existing in a different phase of visibility, perhaps this is some kind of holographic system. Maybe it was set up this way to prevent any ghoul old from interacting with it, as Teal'c is unable to see them due to his symbiote. If we go by World's idea that the Furling was a single entity, perhaps it needed assistance in running a civilization and create programs to assist it. Given their caretaker nature, that would make sense. And if the Furlings are not a single entity, well, advanced programs like these would be useful in any society. We don't know why the Furlings vanished. We can't even say they vanished because no one really talks about them. But for whatever reason, they are no longer around. An attack by the Goo Old, Hawkin, or some third thing, perhaps they left these computer programs running, and they still follow the programming of their creators. Now, I do want to address one thing. I feel like I'm going to get a comment saying that I'm just connecting various dots with red strings on a board, and that this was never the intention of either race, or I'm pulling from sources outside of what the creators intended. And yes, I'm going full red string on a board right now, but here's the thing. I don't think there was ever any plan for either race. According to GateWorld, Robert C. Cooper created the name Furling because he thought, the fifth race sounded cooler for an episode title than the fourth race. They had the other three and needed a fourth. Part of the reason they did Paradise Lost was because people kept bothering him about them. Knox, Asgard, Furlings, Furlings. Oh. <sighs> Which, uh, of course, I've gotten a lot of heat oh, on the uh, on the internet from fans of the show uh, because I mentioned them in in an. Uh, early episode season one um, called Torment of Tantalus and uh, they were the four races of the Alliance and, and uh, we have not heard of the Furlings since then and everybody's been asking what about the Furlings? What do they look like? Well, I finally decided to address it and at least mention them in, at least in passing. And even then, what did we really learn about the Furlings in that episode? The colony was founded by some of them, they invited various species to join them, and the colony was wiped out by a plant brought by Ghoul Old. That's kind of it. Granted, I'm using the diary from that episode as evidence for my theory, but the only reason I got that detail was looking at behind-the-scenes stuff. And don't bring up the skeletons in the colony because that is honestly a rabbit hole you are not prepared for. And if we're being honest, most are probably humans or near-humans who joined the colony. I don't know what the situation with the giant aliens was, but Joseph did say in that blog post I mentioned earlier that they couldn't really think of new story ideas for them. Now, I'm not going to say my theory is perfect or without holes, but I like the idea of combining ideas and concepts from the external media. It's why I like the 2021 RPG book. It tries to combine elements from the books and older RPGs together. On that note, the 2021 RPG is kind of weird in how it handles the giant aliens. They do have their own lore page, which seems to reinforce the idea that they are just giant aliens made of smoke. But on the Orban page, they do bring up the name, and it does imply that they seeded humans on various plants in the Milky Way, but it's never stated. And on that note, this is why I said Stargate canon is weird, because fans and some writers have decided that the external media is not canon, but clearly some higher-ups feel differently as not only was this included, but I remember that the book was delayed because MGM wanted to look over the book itself before giving their approval. Ultimately what I'm saying is that the lore surrounding these two is so vague, 
you could really write anything and it would make just as much sense. I'm just basing my theory on somewhat already established ideas that could be brought into the proper canon one day. But what do you all think? Do you like the idea that the giant aliens are some kind of creation of the furlings? Or do you prefer if that, that they were their own separate race? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe. Follow me on my social medias. And remember... Hello! What's your name? Desert Model. Are you hunting, hunting, witches?